right from the get-go, I always loved art. Even when I was in grade school, I loved art. I had a wonderful teacher. I had a wonderful teacher in high school also. But there was that part of me as a child and as a teenager that I didn't think I was good enough. It was never good enough. And then I ended up going to art school, and I ended up studying at Yale for a while, and there was a little school called the Pear School of Art in New Haven. And I think it's in the beginning when you're learning the skill. It takes a lot of guts to learn to do something when you really can't do it. You've got to learn the language of what you're doing. If you're a singer, you need to learn how to use your voice. And if you're a painter, you need to use, learn how to use paint. You need to know how to draw, because you have all these great ideas, but if you can't put them into reality, it's just an idea. And my father always used to say, ideas are cheap, but do something. So it's like, putting this into reality and of course it's not going to look great in the beginning or you may be lucky and have it look great but there's some days when things aren't going to go great and those are the days you just say you know this wasn't my best day but I at least I had fun doing it or at least I keep doing it and I know that tomorrow is going to be another day and I get another chance to create in some something absolutely magnificent and I really do I get the opportunity to hook into some energy much greater than myself. I transitioned from painting to sculpting because my husband in 1979 was killed in an automobile accident. And before then I had been doing all these landscape paintings and they were they were pretty. They were beautiful actually. But when I then I had all the sorrow to deal with and I moved to Mexico and I started sculpting. For me, a lot of the sculpture, the beginning sculpture, was about trying to figure out the male, female, and the child and how that worked. Because we all have the male side, the female side, and our inner child. And then it was about being in harmony, these three dancing in harmony, and where did the focus go? If, if you had the, the two parents, did they, where did they focus? And then I realized they had to focus on the child. So I kept having these revelations as I was doing these pieces. And then I can remember my first show at the United Nations and I meditate in the morning and all these ideas started coming through of sculpture that I was supposed to do. And it was about celebration of life and it was about peace. And it was about peace coming on the earth and the potential of every single human being being in a space of peace. And so the first show was called 1000 Years of Peace once I, that UN show hit, I mean, everything changed. Then I ended up being invited to go to The Hague in the Netherlands on a big peace conference. And that's, you know, that was incredible, that whole trip there. And then I ended up in Paris. And then, then the big one was when the Archbishop of Canterbury connected with my work through the United Nations and asked me to do a commission. And then one day he said to me, would you like to meet the Queen? And I said, yes, that would be very nice. Never, I didn't really get the impact of the importance of something like that. It's really an honor. I don't think it matters how you're creative. You could plant a garden or, you know, cook in the kitchen, or you could dance around the house, or you could sing in the shower or sing in the car, or you can paint, you could just get color, any kind of color, pastels, and just put it down but do something. And if you have the desire, if something's come across your radar screen that says, oh, I wish I could just sketch, do it. That means there's something inside you that wants to do it. And that's so important to listen. Listen to that inner self because that's who we truly are. And I want people of all ages, you know, from the little ones to the people who are, you know, been painting for years and for the people who've never picked up a brush of any age, to feel, if I've ever wanted to paint, I'm gonna try it. If I've ever wanted to create anything, I'm gonna try it. And if I don't know how to do it, I'll go ask for help. I, there are people that know how to teach these things. I will go find that help. I'm gonna have the joy of creating in my life.